Unless you've been living under a digital rock recently, you're probably aware of the advancements in AI over the past year. But how can you as a developer make the most of these to increase your productivity and learning? Well, you've likely heard of Copilot by GitHub, which has arrived on both VS Code and NeoVim. But you may not know there's other NeoVim plugins that provide additional AI features. In this video, I'm going to introduce one of these other plugins. One that also has the ability to do code autocompletion, but really the other features are where it shines. With this plugin, we can auto-generate unit tests for our code, ask the AI to explain what the code in our editor is doing, fix any bugs that the AI detects, and provide many other valuable features for improving our workflow when writing code. This plugin is the wonderful chatgpt.nvim plugin by Jack Mort, which brings chatgpt functionality straight into NeoVim. By doing so, it brings some really nice developer experience and provides some default commands for coding. Before we take a deep dive into these features, let's go ahead and see how we can get chatgpt.nvim set up. I'm using nvchat as my base configuration, so I'll show you how to set this up using the lazy package manager. If you're not using nvchat but you want to, I do have an introduction video that you can watch to get set up. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you know how to use your NeoVim package manager already. First, let's add in an entry for chatgpt.nvim into our plugins.lua file. We'll set this to load on the event of very lazy and add in the dependencies we need to load beforehand. Next, we need to provide some configuration to the plugin. And to do this, you'll need an OpenAI API key. Let's go ahead and create one. Head on over to the OpenAI website and log in, or sign up if you don't already have an account. Once inside, head on over to the API page and then click on your profile picture. Here, you can generate a new API key by clicking on the Create New Secret Key button. You'll get a prompt to add a name for this key, which is optional, but I'd probably recommend you do so. I'm going to call mine chatgpt.nvim so I know which application this key belongs to. After submitting your name, your API key will be shown to you. Go ahead and copy that key to your clipboard and keep it somewhere safe for the meantime. Whilst you're here, it's worth checking if you have any free credits to test with. If you created a new account, you should be good to go. However, if you have an older account, you probably need to add some payment information so that you're on the pay-as-you-go plan. You can check that out on the billing tab. Back over in the NeoVim configuration, we'll need to add the API key to our plugin. First, create the config blog and then add the line to require the plugin and call setup on it. Now, here's the tricky part. We'll need to provide the key to the plugin securely. There's two ways to do this. The first is by setting the OpenAI API key environment variable before loading NeoVim. The second is by setting the API key command field of the setup options with a command that would load your API key. If you've watched my other videos, you'll probably know a secure way to do this, which is by using Password Store. If you're using a password manager that you can access from the terminal, such as Password Store or 1Password, then make sure to use this for the command. I have my API keys set up in a secret under API slash token slash OpenAI. So this is what my command looks like. If you don't have a password manager you can use on the terminal, then you can either use the OpenAI API key MVAR that we saw earlier, or you can use the echo command to hardcode the API key in your config. Still though, it's not a great practice to keep sensitive tokens in a text file unencrypted, so I really do recommend checking out my video on password store after this one. This is enough to get going, but if you look at my actual configuration, you'll notice that I'm using the async API key command option instead of the one I mentioned. That's because I have my own fork which uses an async API for loading in the key, which dramatically improves the startup time. I've submitted a PR to the main repo with this functionality, but feel free to use my fork if this still isn't merged and you want to use it yourself. The link is in the description. Okay, with our key command added, we can restart NeoVim to install the plugin. Once that's done, we can test out some of the features. The plugin provides a number of commands we can use to interface with ChatGPT. If you type in colon and then ChatGPT, you'll see these pop up in your command autocomplete. We'll go through these one by one, but let's select the basic ChatGPT command first. Doing so will bring up a floating window with a prompt that we can use to write a message to ChatGPT. Let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT a question. Once we have our prompt written, we can submit it by exiting insert mode and pressing enter. Check out that UI and animation, really nice. After a short while, we get back our response, as well as the number of tokens we used. Tokens are used to track our usage, which comes to 3 cents per 1000 tokens. So this question costs us less than 1 cent. Not bad. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We have our basic usage of ChatGPT in NeoVim. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg for what we can do. 
Before we look at some of the other features, I just want to take a moment to quickly talk about the sponsor of this video. Brilliant. AI is starting to produce some of the most innovative products we've seen since the era of the smartphone. And as this technology is only going to improve, now is the time to start thinking about developing your own skills and understanding into how the technology works. By doing so, you can make use of AI to empower your own abilities, or you could even go on to develop AI-based products yourself. Whatever your goals may be, Brilliant.org can help you get there. Brilliant is the best way to learn maths and computer science interactively. With thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced mathematics to Python, AI, data science, and many more, with new lessons being added monthly. One of the lessons I really enjoyed is Introduction to Neural Networks, which gave me an interactive and informative explainer course about how neural networks operate. The way Brilliant sets up these courses makes it the perfect learning experience for myself. Given that I work a full-time job and still produce these YouTube videos, I was easily able to find time to do this course on Brilliant, thanks to the bite-sized lessons that break down the important concepts into understandable components. The interactive lessons provide a hands-on approach to understanding, enabling me to learn by doing, which is how I learn best. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer, visit brilliant.org slash dreams of code, or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And there's a 30 day free trial for everyone to try it out. So give it a go and thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The next command we're gonna look at is the chat GPT complete code command. What this command will do is actually very similar to Copilot, where it will auto-complete our code for us. To test this out, I have a function signature for tallying votes in a vector of integers. Let's go ahead and call the command to see if ChatGPT will automatically add the code for us. After a brief while, it'll show us the ghost value, which we can accept by pressing enter. And with that, our function has been automatically filled for us. This is pretty great, but I still think Copilot is slightly better. What's nice about this, however, is that you can call it on demand when you need it. This helps to prevent the autocomplete AI from becoming a crutch. The next command to look at is one of my favorites, ChatGPT run. This command provides a set of 11 subcommands that we can use for common code actions. Each of these commands basically acts as a template for ChatGPT prompts, which will then define a context on what we want to achieve. There's too many commands to go into depth into in one video, so I'll focus on the three that I think are most powerful. The first is the add tests command, which can be used to auto generate tests for a given piece of code. Let's look at this in action. If we call the ChatGPT run add tests command, after a short amount of time, we'll have some tests generated for our tally function. Taking a look at these tests, it does a pretty good job. In fact, if we go ahead and run them, it'll actually show a bug with our auto-generated function, where it incorrectly handles multiple winners. Fortunately, we can resolve this using the second subcommand that I think is really powerful, the fixed bugs subcommand. This command will tell ChatGPT to analyze our code and fix any bugs that it detects. Because we've now added tests to our code, ChatGPT is better able to understand the expected behavior of our function and is able to detect and fix the bug. We can accept the code from ChatGPT by pressing Ctrl and Y. Now, if we run our tests, we should see everything is working as expected. The third subcommand that I find really awesome is the explain code subcommand. By having this integrated into the editor, it makes what would be a tedious copy and paste task something simple and effective. To use it, all we have to do is select the code block we want explained and call the explain code action. After a short while, a window will open up, which will have a detailed explanation of our code. Nice. If you're interested in what all the other subcommands do, I definitely recommend checking out the actual prompts on GitHub, which should give you an idea of what is happening under the hood. Also, if you want me to do a more detailed video on these, then let me know. This next command took a little while for me to get the hang of, but once I did, it was really awesome to use. This is the chat GPT edit with instructions command, which will open up an interactive window allowing us to provide instructions to ChatGPT to edit our code. Here we have our tally function that is on display in the preview window. Let's ask ChatGPT to use a hash map instead of an array for storing the tally values. After a short while, we'll see the suggestion appear on the right, which we can apply using Ctrl and Y. Upon closing the prompt, we can see that our code has been replaced by this new algorithm. What's really nice about this is it couples with the tests we wrote earlier which we can now run to prove that the code performs as expected following this refactor. As well as accepting the code suggestion, we can also use it for our next prompt to provide more of a contextual conversation. For example, if we go back to how we had our code before and ask ChatGPT the same question, 
We can then press Ctrl and I to accept this answer and then use it for the next prompt. Now I can add instructions to ChatGPT to change something else about the answer it provided me. And when I'm happy, press Ctrl and Y to accept it. Finally, the last command I want to look at is the ChatGPT ask as command. What this does is it allows us to interact with ChatGPT, but in a way that prompts the chatbot to roleplay as something else. This something can be one of the 163 different profiles that come bundled with the plugin. Most of these probably aren't going to find much usage in your day to day, but there are a couple that will. For example, we can ask ChatGPT to act as a Linux terminal, which allows us to mock out terminal commands and simulate how they would behave. As well as a Linux terminal, you can also ask ChatGPT to simulate a JavaScript console for any of you front-end devs. Or we can ask it to act as a SQL terminal for any of you not wishing to play with production data. A personal favorite of mine, however, is the full stack developer role. Using this role, we can ask ChatGPT any developer questions we may have and get some pretty decent answers back. This can be useful if you're wondering about the best way to implement something and can use ChatGPT to give inspiration for ideas. The only drawback to this role is it uses Angular. Sorry to the two Angular devs out there. It's not a technology I've had much exposure to. Fortunately, we can change these predefined prompts if we want to, as they're configured to point at the awesome ChatGPT prompts repository. This way, I can actually make my own full stack dev that is tailored towards my own favorite tech stacks. To do so, we just need to create a CSV with the name of our profile and starting prompt. We'll call this the better full stack dev and copy the prompt from the original. Now let's change the associated technologies to ones that I'm currently interested in. Next, we'll commit this and push this up to our own Git repo. After that, if we head on over to our plugins configuration, we can change the prompts config to point at our custom repos CSV. Now, if we run our act as, we should see that our new profile is in the list. If we select this profile and ask it a question about web servers, we should see that it comes back with a Rust suggestion. Much better. That covers the basic features of the chatgpt.nvim plugin. For me, it won't completely replace Copilot, but it does add additional functionality that can really supplement it. I'd love to know what you think, so please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.